Hi, my name's Charlotte Reeves, and you've tuned into another editing toolbox video where we share a quick tip, trick, or technique to help improve your pet photography editing. So for all those Lightroom users out there, and I'm sure there are plenty, a lot of people use Lightroom, how do you get your raw files out of Lightroom and into another format? Export presets are a really essential part of using Lightroom. I'm a big believer in anything I can do to save time. I love using keyboard shortcuts, automations, and of course, presets for commonly completed tasks. So export presets fall into that same sort of category. They're no exception. I've got a ton of them set up here in Lightroom. So to access the export dialog box, you can just go to file export and you can see that there's a keyboard shortcut there that you can use as well. And that keyboard shortcut is shift command E. So first of all, obviously you need to select the image or images that you want to export. I'm just gonna choose anyone here and I'm gonna press Shift Command E and it brings up this export dialog box. So what sort of presets do I have set up? The biggest one that I use all of the time is my export for editing preset. So you know when you're editing a raw file in Lightroom, you've got all your edits finalized and it's ready to take into Photoshop. A lot of people just press Command E which exports the image directly to Photoshop. I like using an editing preset for this instead. Number one reason is I'm able to put that edited file into a subfolder so that all my edited PSD files are not sitting in with all my raw files. It's just a really good way of organizing your images. So let's take a look at my export for editing preset to start with. So for each preset, you can set up or you can specify a bunch of different criteria um, on how Lightroom actually handles the export. First of all, really important one is the export location. So for this preset, I export the image to the same folder as the original, but I put it in a subfolder and I put it in a subfolder called final. I also tick this, which adds it back into the catalog. That means that after I finished editing the image in Photoshop, I can go back to Lightroom and the final edited image appears there in Lightroom. Really, really handy. It means that you're not having to re-import images. And the obvious question there is, why would you want it back in Lightroom? And the answer to that is, so you can then export it out as JPEGs for various other reasons. I always like to have all my final edited PSD files in Lightroom ready to batch process for whatever I need. So, okay, back to these preset specifications here. So I always change the file name on import into Lightroom and it's always the original file number plus the date plus my name. I never rename my files. Once the raw file is called that, every other version of that file, whether it's a PSD or a JPEG, it always has that same file name. So I very rarely rename my files. Video, you can just leave that collapsed because obviously we're dealing with images, not video. Now file settings, this is a big one. I like to use PSD as the image format. It's always a toss up between PSD and TIFF. Uh, back in the day, TIFF didn't used to be quite as compatible with uh, the features of Photoshop. It is now, but since I've always used PSD, that's what I will continue to use. These days, it doesn't really matter whether you use PSD or TIFF. I always use sRGB color space because that is what looks best on screen and that is what my printing company uses. So always best to keep it in the one that is most compatible with everything. Bit depth, I always set it to eight bits. Eight bit files are definitely smaller than 16 bit files. I never have a problem with using eight bit files so I always keep it that. So image resizing, if I'm exporting from the raw file, I want the absolute full size. I don't even crop before I export from Lightroom. So I definitely don't do any sort of resizing. I don't do any sharpening either. I like to have more control over my sharpening, so I don't sharpen. Metadata, I like my images to include all the metadata. Watermarking, again, watermarking is not something I do to my initial export from the raw file. It is something that I do later when I'm exporting JPEGs. And then post-processing after export, I always open in Photoshop because generally I'm moving straight into my Photoshop edit. 
So that is my export for editing preset. I love it. I use it all the time and it's a big part of my workflow. So what else might you want to use export presets for? So once I have all my final edited PSDs back in Lightroom, so as you can see here, this is the folder with all the raw files. I've filtered by flagged. So these are all the raw files from the photo session. As you can see, I go through and flag and reject and color code and all that sort of stuff, but that might be a editing toolbox video for another day. So once I've exported all my final images, there was 55 from this session, I've edited them in Photoshop and here they are back in Lightroom in a subfolder called final and here are all my final edited PSD files. So with these files, I might want to share them on Facebook. I might want to share them on Instagram. I might need to export them for printing. There's a bunch of different things I might need to do with these files. And I have export presets set up for all of those. So for example, say this image here, I wanted to export to share it on Facebook. I would go shift command E to bring up my export dialog box. I have a folder here called social. So I would just select Facebook. And that then fills in all of the specifications for exporting an image to upload to Facebook. So what else might you want to use presets for? Let's take a look at some of my other presets. I also have presets set up for printing. Obviously they have a higher resolution. They're resized to fit a particular physical dimension rather than a number of pixels. I also have presets set up for blog photos, uh, for client printing and social media when I'm supplying digital files to them. I have presets set up for the rescue organizations that I work with, so how I supply the images to them so they can use them for promoting the pet for rehoming. So as you can see, I have a bunch of presets set up. So let's have a look at how you actually create a preset. Generally, if you haven't set any other presets up before, you'll have Lightroom presets and user presets, just these two folders. So in the Lightroom presets folder, you've got a few different ones here for email hard drive. Um, let's start with this as a base and we can edit that and then save that as a new preset. So let's say we're setting a preset up for sharing on Facebook. So you want to make sure you're exporting to the hard drive. Export to, I always like to choose a folder where I'm going to be exporting to, even if it's just the desktop and maybe into a subfolder called to share for Facebook. You don't want to add it back into the catalog. I generally don't like to have my JPEGs added back into the Lightroom catalogs because once they've been exported for a particular purpose, I don't really need to do anything more with them in Lightroom and it would just clutter up Lightroom. So I don't add to the catalog. Existing files, if you're overwriting a file, it's always nice for it to pop up and say, do you want me to overwrite that? So that's good. You can rename if you like, I don't rename. You can set the image format. If it's for sharing on Facebook, it needs to be a JPEG. It should also be sRGB. And you probably wanna take the quality up to sort of 90 or 100. You can specify that there. You definitely wanna resize the image, especially if you're coming from a fully edited PSD, which is thousands of pixels wide. So you want to resize that to 2048 is the optimum size for Facebook on the long edge. You want to set the resolution to 72. You might want to set output sharpening. You might want to include metadata. You might not want to. That's totally up to you. I generally include it all. You might want to add a watermark and you'll need to go and work out how to set up your watermarks there and you might want to show it in Finder. So now you've got all these settings here. You need to actually save this as a preset because otherwise next time you go in here, Lightroom is not going to remember that that's the settings that you want. So you need to go down here and click add. So this gives you the opportunity to give the preset a name. So I'm going to call this Facebook export and I'm going to save it in, I'm just going to save it in user presets. So it'll pop up down the bottom here and then click create. So now I have my new Facebook export set up down here. So this means if I go in and say, I want to export this image here, I'll go shift command E and I will select Facebook export. Now, this is really important. If you're using a single export preset, 
click on the text to highlight the export preset. Do not tick. As soon as you tick, you have selected multiple presets and it's not going to allow you to change things if you want to export to a different location. It's just going to really mess things up. So make sure you're not ticking. Make sure you are selecting. Very important. So now that you have this export preset set up, anytime you want to export images for Facebook, you can do that really quickly and easily. Now, what if you decide that you want to change something about this export? Really easy to do. Say you wanted to put it in your pictures folder instead of your desktop. You can change it to the pictures folder. Now see that highlight has disappeared because you've actually changed that preset. Lightroom is not going to automatically remember that. You need to tell it to update that preset. So to update that preset with your new settings, you just need to right click and click update with current settings. And that will now remember that you've said that you want to export it to the pictures folder instead of the desktop. So that's a basic rundown of how to create an export preset. If you would like to organize them into folders the way that I have them here, you just need to right click on an existing folder and it'll come up with new folder. And then this one I'm just going to call new create. It's going to turn up up here. Say I want to put that Facebook export preset into that folder. All you have to do is click and drag and it will turn up in there. So the other thing is, of course, it allows for batch processing. So if I choose, say, let's say these four images here and I want to export all of them, I just need shift command export. I want to export them for Facebook and then click export and they will turn up all ready to share super quick super easy the exact specifications that i want them to be so i think that pretty much gives you a good rundown of export presets how to use them how to create them how to move them into folders how to update them if you need to if you have any questions or comments please post them below i'd love to hear from you and also if you have any other ideas for things that you would like me to cover i have a feeling that watermarks <laughs> might be one of those so you might see an editing toolbox coming up soon on that topic in the meantime have fun with your pet photography and i shall catch up with you soon